I'm just about to wrap up a trip to Lahore, Pakistan. I was here to meet with some customers and partners, and also in the tradition of my innovation tours all over the world, really learn more about what's going on in Lahore in terms of research, innovation, and particularly the pursuit of uh, technologies like artificial intelligence, quantum, and more. And today I want to share with you a little bit of what I saw, and hopefully through my eyes and through my experience, you'll gain uh, an appreciation of what's going on in this uh, incredible city. So first of all, an interesting fact about Lahore is that in the 16th century, Lahore was actually one of the largest manufacturing centers for mechanical computers. Uh, these are ancient devices called astrolabes, and they were being manufactured in what's now referred to as the old city of Lahore by um, a great engineer whose name was Muhammad Mukim. And his family uh, owned a business. They manufactured astrolabes that were exported all through the world. Now, of course, since then, a lot has happened in technology, but it's still interesting to think that Lahore was building computers, let's say, two, three hundred years before um, the analytical engine that Charles, uh, Charles Babbage worked on. Now, uh, what's going on in Lahore today, uh, in order to understand that, uh, I toured the Lahore University of Management Sciences, which is a business and science school that was established about four or five decades ago here in, uh, in the city. And this school was established by one of the most prominent Pakistani businessmen, Sayyid Babar Ali, who I also met. And he actually, uh, at the age of 97, still continues to be a really active and uh, enthusiastic participant in all the work that's going on in the city. In fact, he works from the office on a daily basis at this age. He's a remarkable person. And I'll talk more about him here in a second. So at the Lahore University of Management Sciences, uh, I was accompanied by Professor Bruce Porter, who is the chief science officer at Spark Cognition and the two-time chairman of UT Austin's computer science department. Uh, Professor Porter delivered a talk on the three generations of AI, which focused on you know, the early work in search and symbolic AI, and then, of course, the pivot to expert systems, and then finally, deep learning, generative AI, and all the stuff that's happening now. There was a very enthusiastic audience, uh, which included faculty, it included students, and it included other people that are associated with the university ecosystem. Uh, but after the talk, we were able to actually sit down with a large number of uh, the School of Science and Engineering faculty and talk to them about the projects that are going on right now in their school. I learned that one of the things that LUMS has been doing over the last several years is uh, essentially spawning startups. There are student groups that do innovative, interesting work, and then they go off into the real world and launch a business. And that's been happening now for many years. Uh, three projects that really caught my attention at LUMS. The first was a quantum computing project. And the dean of the School of Science and Engineering told us that there's actually a two-qubit quantum computer that students at the school have built. And that a computer has been used to demonstrate many quantum uh, principles, uh, many quantum um, behaviors of matter. And uh, in addition to that, it's also the basis for a quantum computing uh, course. And now that course is actually being expanded at the university into a minor in quantum computing, which is really tremendous. Uh, and it, it, this makes LUMS and Lahore one of the few places in the world where actual quantum computing hardware work is going on. Uh, so that was really, really interesting to me. Quantum computing can revolutionize material science. It can revolutionize the way we run complex simulations. And in that, it's a transformative technology. So to see this level of work going on at LUMS was, was quite remarkable. The other thing that I saw, which was very impressive, is the intersection of agri-tech and IoT. So agricultural technologies are really important globally, but particularly in Pakistan, which exports a lot of its agricultural goods and is, is mainly an agricultural country and has been for many, many decades. So the potential to increase yield, to reduce crop disease, to uh, create more sustainable practices uh, in terms of water conservation, 
and the application of IoT and AI as a control mechanism in agriculture is tremendous. It's transformative from the point of view of an individual business, which can be far more profitable and can do a lot more with a smaller amount of land and a smaller amount of water, but also transformative for the economy, which can now produce more for its own people and export a lot more. So that was an area that, uh, again, uh, they're doing a lot of work there, uh, particularly using IoT, inexpensive, locally made devices, gathering a lot of data around plant health, humidity, environmental factors, and then uh, building AI control mechanisms to uh, essentially control the uh, uh, ingredients, the water, the fertilizer that go into growing crops. The third area that was really interesting to me was EVs. Uh, so electric vehicles are another area of uh, research and collaboration between the mechanical engineering, the electrical engineering, and, and the computer science uh, fields uh, at LUMS, the departments there. And what uh, students have already done is they've built uh, a number of very low cost uh, electric vehicles, one of which is a three-wheel electric vehicle that's designed for urban commute, short distances, low-speed traffic, the kind of thing that you know you see a lot of in an Asian city. So it's the type of innovation that's really tuned for this place, for this economy. And again, it reminds me that sometimes when you see the world with a single lens and all we see are Teslas all over, uh, it really leaves out a lot of the complexity of the real world. Uh, you know, not every city is the same, not every economy is the same, and not every population's needs are the same. So there's a lot to say about local innovation, and, and particularly when you marry that with academia, being able to bring research into it, and being able to do that kind of first principles innovation, both from the point of view of understanding the problem because you're living here and you you understand exactly what the needs of the place are and then solving the problem applying technology to to build a solution so that was incredibly impressive and i think that there's going to be um, you know uh, companies that come out of lums multiple companies the first one has already been launched but there'll be many more that will focus on ev technologies um, evs are already being manufactured uh, here in lahore uh, there are partnerships uh, that local firms have with various Chinese companies. There's also local innovation. So EVs definitely seem to be on the up, and this definitely seems to be a wave of the future for the city. In addition to LUMS, we also went to another academic institution, uh, which was actually my old um, alma mater, uh, HSN College. Now, HSN uh, started its life as a uh, colonial-era school for the elite, um, back in the late 1800s. But since then, it's evolved a lot, and it's now become an institution which, yes, it definitely provides a high-end education to all of the students there, but it also extends full-ride scholarships to kids from all over the country. And one of the boys that I met there who I was incredibly impressed with um, is, is a student that came from the tribal belt uh, along the Afghan border, uh, this area called North Waziristan. And, and this young man had come to HSN on a full scholarship. He had excelled in all of his subjects and told me that he's on his way to Dartmouth, also on a scholarship. So this young man is not just going to change his own life, uh, but he's also going to change the lives of his family members and indeed of his village where he hails from. That was very gratifying to see. Uh, but then as we were taken around the campus of HSN by the principal, we also saw that HSN is now building a new facility where they'll be, uh, and that facility will be dedicated to artificial intelligence, robotics, and biotech. The chemistry labs at the school, I mean, for a high school, the chemistry labs were incredibly advanced, well-equipped. There's a lot of work going on. But now this new AI and uh, robotics center, which uh, will also have a biotech component to it, really takes it to the next level. So in terms of these technologies and, and you know, essentially uh, imbibing young minds with these skills and an interest in these fields, I think what HSN is doing will go a long way. And a lot of credit goes to the principal, uh, Mr. Thompson, who's really done a great job uh, in, in the last seven years that he's been leading that school. 
Now, in addition to the academic institutions, we also met with a lot of local companies. And there's all types of innovation happening in the local ecosystem. Uh, there's a lot of export orientation that many of the businesses uh, in Lahore have. Uh, I met with lots of companies in the power space because I'm interested in alternative energy. I'm interested in grid optimization. Spark Cognition does a lot of uh, work in these areas. So we met with Usman Malik, who runs the uh, power design group at Pitco, which is a, a, a company that traces its origins back to the 1930s and does a lot of work in the power sector. Uh, we also met with Salim Rahman, who uh, runs uh, a company that's focused on high voltage products for the grid. And uh, now they've started to export their products to the U.S. They were already exporting products in the, to the region, but now um, you know they've really gone international and uh, are exporting their products uh, across the Atlantic. Uh, in addition to the power innovation, we also met with a lot of software companies. And uh, Five Rivers, one company in particular that we've had a long association with at Spark Cognition, they're doing tremendous work. Um, not only in providing services capabilities, but now also getting into products. And that's really where things will start to change. When local companies, whether in Munich, whether in Austin, whether in Lahore, when they get into product innovation and they have that kind of repeatable high margin model, that's really where things start to change. That's really what the Valley has done so well over the last many decades. Building products is hard building one thing that millions of people, tens of thousands of people all over the world will use and like across so many cultures, so many geographies is hard. So it was great to see lots of software products now coming out of companies like Five Rivers. Uh, they're you know, enhancing the window management capability of um, Microsoft Windows, being able to do productivity tasks through uh, you know, new applications that they're building. So a lot of innovation coming out of software companies. There's also a lot of focus on the intersection between AI and industry. So one of the industrial parks that we visited, which is less than an hour outside of Lahore, has 650 factories, everything from uh, chemical industry, paints, to pharmaceuticals, to garments and textile. Uh, it's called the Sundar Industrial Estate, and it has 650 factories that are now active. So as we visited them, we saw a lot of multinationals, um, a large German multinational that's actually a Spark Cognition customer. We had a great tour of their facility, and we saw, again, applications of automation, applications of IoT, applications of AI now coming up in all of these areas. And the gentleman that took us there, uh, Mr. Nabil, who runs a company called Core9, which is again focused on industrial applications of AI, he was telling us about, uh, you know, this being just one example, but a large number of companies are now beginning to apply AI for predictive maintenance in the local industry. Uh, and I know this from our own experience where uh, KMLG, uh, one of the largest cement producers, Maple Leaf Cement in Pakistan, which is a Spark Cognition client, uh, they've been using artificial intelligence to optimize the use of electricity in cement plants. As you know, cement is incredibly energy intensive. There are usually you know, multi-megawatt power uh, uh, systems that are associated with a single cement plant. So to be able to cut down that power consumption goes a long way. Uh, and that's really what AI is being used for. Now, the really interesting thing here is that none of the infrastructure is being ripped and replaced. You don't need to rip out your existing cement plant or the controllers. You just need to make them smarter. And that's really what Maple Leaf is doing, which is so revolutionary uh, in partnership with the teams at Spark Cognition. This was just a small sampling of what we saw. Uh, electric vehicles, they're happening, they're being built. Uh, artificial intelligence in industry, it's being applied in, in multiple industries. Uh, visual AI, it's being applied for health and safety and for security and numerous other applications. It's here, it's being done. Young companies, uh, quantum computing, it's all here, it's all happening and it's magical to see. Uh, this might not be a city that many people associate with high technology or that many people associate with entrepreneurship, 
but that's probably only because they haven't been here. And one of the great strengths of person-to-person -person contact, being able to see somebody across the table, eye to eye, being able to talk to them, learn about their experiences, go around, uh, gather knowledge at that first, you know, uh, at that uh, the actual ground level, it goes a long way in creating a comprehensive understanding of what a place is about and where technology is going. This was an eye-opening trip and I recommend it to everybody.